Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, and very good afternoon. Welcome to 112 Professions uh, Inaugural Lecture Series. To begin uh, this event, uh, I would like to invite uh, Yang Barbahagia Encik Jaya Abdul Hussein to recite the Doa. Ya Allah, kami mohon padamu kebaikan terjadi ini dan segala kebaikan yang ada di dalamnya. Dan kami berlindung padamu daripada keburukan terjadi dan segala keburukan yang ada di dalamnya. Sesungguhnya di atas segala sesuatu itu, engkau lah yang maha berkuasa menentukannya. Allahumma ja'al jam'ana jam'ah hazal jam'ah marhumah wa tafarukna min ba'di tafarukna ma'asumah wa ala taj'al fina wa ala ma'asika wa ala ma'ana syakia wa ala matruda wa ala mahrumah. Ya Allah, jadikanlah perimpunan kami ini sebagai satu perimpunan yang dirahmati dan perpisahan kami pula selepas ini sebagai satu perpisahan yang diberkati dan dilindungi. Dan janganlah engkau jadikan pada diri kami ini dan mereka yang bersama kami kebinasaan dan menyingkirkan kami dari memperolehi rahmat. Ya Allah, ya Tuhan kami, hanya padamu sahaja kami panjangkan kesyukuran atas segala rahmat dan berkahmu. Bersempena dengan majlis syarahan perdana profesor pada hari ini, kami memohon inayah dan taufikmu, kurniakanlah kesejahteraan dan kebahagiaan kepada kami. Bukakanlah hati-hati kami, lapangkanlah dari kami supaya kami dapat mengisi ilmu dan pengetahuan yang berguna untuk agama, bangsa dan negara. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Kami memohon padamu agar engkau berkatilah majlis ini dengan limpah rahmatmu. Semoga segala usaha kami dalam menjayakan majlis ini mendapat keredaan dan hidayahmu. Sesungguhnya pada hari ini kami berkumpul keranamu, Ya Allah. Kami berkumpul untuk menerima ilmu, bertukar pendapat, menyumbangkan buah fikiran, menghubungkan surat rahim dan memberi sokongan ke arah meningkatkan lagi prestasi jabatan kami. Ya Allah, Ya Zal Jalal Iwal Ikram, kami mohon kekuatan dan hidar hadratmu, Ya Allah, supaya kami yang hadir pada hari ini, agar kami dapat melaksanakan segala kebajikan dan kami mohon perlindungan dengan engkau daripada melakukan keburukan. Ya Allah, kurniakanlah kepada kami kekayaan ilmu pengetahuan dan hiasilah diri kami dengan sifat lemah lembut serta muliakanlah kami dengan ketakwaan dan indahkan indahkanlah diri kami dengan kesihatan. Rabbi sholli sadri wa yassirli amri walhu wahlu natam lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah fil akhirati hasanah wa qina azaban nar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wasallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Amin, amin, ya Rabbul Alamin. Thank you, uh, Encik Jaya Abdul Hussein, for the signs with hope this event will be blessed, inshallah. Uh, today with the national anthem. Please all the audience to stand up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Yang berbahagia Associate Professor Engineer Technology Jaini Ahmad, Dean of Mechanical Engineering and the Chairman for this session. Yang berbahagia Profesor Hasbullah bin Haji Idris, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, Honorable Speaker. Yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Yahya bin Matsam, Director Center for Quality and Risk Management, UTM Kirim, as a commentator for this lecture. Yang berbahagia Madam Nurul Hidayah binti Rusli, Nuraza Maisarah binti Muhammad Murad from Ranhil Water Service Sendirian Berhad. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 112 Professions Inaugural Lecture Series. It is great pleasure with another profession uh, series at UTM. For this series, the lecture will be delivered by our Honorable uh, Professor Dr. Hasbullah Haji Idris with his topic, Developing and Implementing ISO 9001 Quality Management System in Manufacturing and Service Industry and Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to call upon our chairman, Associate Professor Engineer Technologies, Dr. Jaini Ahmad, to deliver his opening remark and introduce our uh, great pressure professor today as, uh, uh, as this lecture. Uh, Dr. Jaini, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dan salam sejahtera. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrofil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabbihi ajmain. Yang dihormati our distinguished speaker Prof Dr Hasbullah which is also my former boss. Yang berusaha Professor Dr Yahya Maksam the right director of Curie UTM all the administrative staff, faculty of mechanical engineering, 
academic staff, faculty of mechanical engineering, and all academic staff and UTM staff. Okay, uh, Alhamdulillah, today will be served uh, with uh, talk by our honorable speaker, Professor Dr. Muhammad Asbullah bin Haji Idris. Today, uh, I will give some introduction about our uh, speaker today. Okay. Prof. Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad Asfullah has been with the University of Technology Malaysia for almost 31 years. Prior to joining UTM, he worked as manufacturing engineer in a local and Canadian-based manufacturing industry for five years after completing his bachelor degree in mechanical production engineering in 1986. He started his career at UTM on 2nd of May 1991 and pursued his master degree in manufacturing engineering at Labra University of Technology, United Kingdom in November 1993 and PhD at UTM in 1998. Prof. Dr. Hasbullah has been involved in the administration at the faculty and university for 15 years since 2007. He was the head of the Department for Materials Engineering, Deputy Director Academic of the University Quality Unit, Deputy Dean for Academic Dean of Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and Chair of School of Mechanical Engineering and also Chairman of UTM Council of Professors. He was the ISO 9001 Quality Management System Consultant for various departments and faculty in UTM, Tabung Haji, Sunway College Library, UPSI, UITM, IIUM, and many companies in Pasir Gudang, Tebrau, and Tampoi industrial area. He was also the MQA accreditation system consultant for Malaysia Polytechnic and Community College Education Department and the Malaysia Institute of Teacher Education and Technical Consultant to a local implant manufacturing company. During that period, he has conducted and facilitated more than 200 courses and auditing exercises. The research area he is most involved with the method with uh, metal casting and material processing, in particular magnesium alloy for biomedical application. He is currently the international member of the American Foundry Society, member of the Malaysian Science, Engineering and Technology Society, and life member of the Electron Microscopy Society of Malaysia. Okay, without further ado, I would like to invite our distinguished speaker today for professional inaugural lecture series. Professor Dr. Muhammad Asbullah bin Haji Idris be entitled Developing and Implementing ISO 9001 Quality Management System in Manufacturing and Service Industry and Experience. I pass to you, Prof. Asbullah. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, the chairman, as well as uh, the dean of Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, it's a great pleasure and it's an honor for me to be in front here to give a talk to all of you uh, on this topic that I'm fond of for the past 26 years. Um, 
I think this is the third or the fourth topic that I'm trying to uh, to talk. But uh, at first, it was about my research. Um, then finally, uh, I thought that this topic is uh, about my research is a bit specific, and I feel that uh, ISO 9000 is much more broad in nature. That probably uh, be more useful to to others rather than uh, talking about my uh, research. Um, the topic that I'm going to talk about is uh, developing and implementing ISO 9000 quality management system. Uh, it is based on my experience. So I basically I don't have any data uh, because most of the data are very uh, combination to companies. Uh, I will talk about my experience developing uh the systems then probably um, could be used in um, in our uh, teaching analogy uh, before that i would like to acknowledge uh, university of Technology malaysia for the, uh, for the opportunity that be given to me uh, when i did my uh, five days course on iso 9000 in 1996 um, Pagustakan Sultan Azanaria was the first entity in ETM that provided me the platform and the opportunity to practice what I've learned for the past five, uh, for the, after the course. And uh, also uh, a colleague of mine, a good colleague of mine that has been with me, um, gathering all this uh, experience, Associate Professor Muhammad Shoki Arif, uh, we have gone through a lot of uh, challenges uh, uh, when we when we did uh, our job or our consulting work with the industries, and then Pustaka uh, Sutana uh, Zanera was the first entity. Then uh, I had the opportunity to uh, assist Faculty of Civil Engineering. Uh, and then Department of Registrar. So these are the entity in UTM. In fact, there are a lot more. Uh, but I would like to thank them to provide me uh, the platform for me to practice what I've uh, learned so far. And I also like to uh, uh, thank Anugrah HRM Consultants Sinan Berhad, as well as ProCenter Training and Consultancy Sinan Berhad. These are companies uh, which allow me, uh, call me, uh, to do consulting work, so I appreciate um, their willingness to uh, to appoint me as consultants to their companies. So, based on this platform, that I learned a lot from companies. Okay. Uh, these are some of the companies, uh, big companies that I'm involved with. Uh, these are probably a few percent of many companies that have gone through. Uh, for example, like uh, Antara Steels. I think we have staff here from Antara Steels, Fauzi. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Intel Corporations in Lakin. And then uh, Zara Foods. I think most of you know Zara Foods. I've been there for probably four or five times. Uh, and then we have uh, Chandra Plastics. Um, we have many more, actually. So this is just to give you some ideas. Um, the platform that uh, 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 the companies that provide me opportunities uh, to, to gather my experience. Uh, based on all those experience, uh, many people will say ISO 9000. People always ask, what is actually ISO 9000? Uh, many will say about documentation, all those things, but based on my experience for the past 26 years, this is what I can tell you. So from my perspective, uh, ISO 9000 basically is a system that can inculcate, that's actually inculcating uh, quality culture in organizations. So it will take time for an organization to instill quality cultures. So if you have the system uh, based on documentations, then you, uh, should be able to inculcate or uh, instill uh, this quality culture. The second one that I see is uh, basically ISO 9000 focus on customer satisfactions. OK, 
care. Any organization, any organization will actually have their own customers. Like us in, in UTM, we have our own customers, whether it is in the system or out of the system. So in order for you to survive, customer is very important. So ISO 9000 is a system, a standard system, which emphasizes or focus on uh, uh, customer satisfaction. For example, if you look at the standards, these are the standards. Uh, in the standards, for example, at 5.1.2, uh, mentioned about customer focus. So it tells you how you need to focus on customers. And 8.2, for example, requirement of product, product and service services. Um, 8.3, design and development of product and services. So it tells you how you're going to design, take into consideration uh, uh, customers' perceptions, customer requirements, what do they want to, to have from your products or services. And also 8.4, control by external provider processes. This is basically subcontractors, okay? And 8.5.1, control production service provision, identification traceability, as well as 8.5.4, preservations. You can see that in the system, it provides a control measures from A to Z. If you are manufacturing companies, it provides you from A to Z, such that your customer is satisfied with your product or services. And many also say that ISO 9000 is very much on um, uh, products based or manufacturing based, but it's not. It is basically for any organization. In fact, Kedemama also can do or can certify with ISO 9000. I, it may sound jokes, but it's not. Okay. Okay, what is actually so? This is this is the this is the uh, uh, latest versions of the standards, the ISO 9001 2015. Okay, which has been launched, um, I think, about seven years ago. Um, what is it? What is actually ISO 9000? So basically, it's an international standard that specify requirements for effective quality management system. We are talking about a system. We are not talking about products. Okay? And it defines the processes, procedures, and activities that need to be established, implemented, maintained, and continuously improved by the organization to manage product, manufacture, or service delivery. So basically, it's a standard that specifies or defines what you need to do in order for you to control your manufacturing systems or service system in order for you to uh, provide a quality products or services. So that's basically uh, ISO 9000 theoretically. A bit, I know all of you know about quality, but I have to tell you this because I need to link it with um, the next slides okay, about, about ISO 9000. So you look at uh, Edward Demings and Kaoru Ishikawa. This is, these are uh, some of the some of the quality gurus. For example, like Edward Demings says here that quality is defined by the satisfactions of the customers. Okay, and uh, Ishikawa also says that high quality is, is the satisfaction of overchanging customers' expectation. So basically, ISO 9000 targeted to satisfy customers. Uh, of yours, okay? whether you are in manufacturing industries or service industries. Okay. So what is actually ISO 9000? So it's actually, uh, ISO is a nickname. Uh, it's, it's, not, it, it's not international standard organization. Okay. ISO is just a nickname for the International Organization for Standard Organizations, which facilitates the creations and voluntary of adoptions of worldwide industrial and manufacturing standards. And so ISO 9000 uh, is therefore a written set of standards which describe, uh, this is a very important statement, uh, is a written set of standards which describes and defines the basic elements of the quality system needed to ensure that organization products or services 
meet or exit customer and needs uh, and expectations. So basically, the last line, meets or exit customer needs and expectations, means it's quality. The one that I told you about the quality gurus. So that statement is basically a statement of quality. If you meet customer requirements, means your product or services is a quality product or services. So ISO 9000 is basically a set of recent standards that defines, okay? It defines and um, describes the basic elements. So the question is, what are those basic elements? Okay, these are the things that uh, we're going to go through for the next probably, what? Half an hour or 45 minutes? So what are those basic elements specified by ISO 9000? So meaning to say, uh, ISO 9000, it is a written standard that describes and defines the basic elements. So if you follow these uh, descriptions of uh, the basic element, you should be able to produce quality products. That's a very simple uh, understanding from this statement. Okay, uh, just to give you some ideas for those who are not involved in ISO 9000, uh, probably from Ryan Hill, you are well versed of ISO 9000, but uh, basically, if you look at ISO 9000 in Malaysia, when I got uh, involved in 1996, when I first got involved in 1996, the first one was uh, the standards that we use, that is ISO 9001 and ISO 9002 1994 versions. So what, uh, why is it 9001 and 9002? Okay, the first thing is, a lot of people ask me about ISO 9000. Alhamdulillah, so far, I think about 99% I can answer all the questions. The only thing is, there's only one question that please don't ask me. Why 9001, 9002? Okay, or why so-called ISO 9001? I know a lot, of, a lot of people here will have that thinking. Uh, to be frank, I don't know. Okay? Uh, for the past 20 year, 26 years, that was the question I could not answer, even though I did some uh, readings. Uh, probably others can help me on that. Um, so we have in 1994 version ISO 9001 and ISO 9002. So ISO 9001 in 1994 version was actually for uh, organization which has design and development. So if you have design and development in your company or that's your activities, then you are certified under 9001. If you are not, if you are not, uh, for example, like services, okay, then you are certified under 9002. So during that time, we have me and my friend, uh, Prof. Uh, Shoki, we had a lot of problems because that version was actually inclined more to manufacturing industries. So when we did, when we assist a PSZ at that time, we had uh, a lot of trouble in interpreting, interpreting uh, the standards. For example, customer properties. So in industries, it's very simple. Customer properties is something that belongs to customers that is being borrowed to the manufacturers. For example, if you want to produce this, the owner will not produce this. It is subcontracted to a manufacturing company. Even though this is a design, but the mold is actually yours or the, or the owner's. So it is part at the company. So the company is only the blue molding for this. But the mold is the owners of the bottles. Okay, so that is in manufacturing, it is called customer properties. But in PSZ, what is customer properties? So those are the things that some of the challenges that we uh, we face uh, in 1994 version. In fact, if at all. Huh? Then uh, um, I can't remember when it changes to 90, uh, 
I assume 9,000 versions. So from 20 uh, crosses in 1994 version, changed to 2,000 version to eight crosses. Okay, then uh, replaced in November 2010, if you look at 2008, but they give uh, two years grace periods for companies, organization to convert from uh, 2000 version to 2008 versions. So 2008 versions is basically nothing much. It is only a uh, change in vocabulary, for example. Um, examples that before this, it says determine. Now it's changed to define. So those under 4.1 uh, um, cross. Okay, these are some of the examples. So there's not much, it's a minor, it is a minor revision from 2000 to 2008. Still eight courses, but in 2008, it introduces certain things here. It introduces um, um, environments cross under 6.2 or 6.3, I can remember, on the uh, 2000 versions. It mentions about requirements to look uh, to um, to controls on work environments. Okay, now from uh, September 2018, uh, you have to for those who are certified under 2008 have to change or uh, recertification to 2015. Now from eight crosses, it changes to ten crosses. Uh, enhance of work. Uh, environment clause, okay, where previously it only uh, look at, for example, like uh, physical environment, noise, for example, heat, uh, temperatures. But now in 2015, it goes into social aspect, okay, it tells you, uh, say, for example, like discrimination on social aspects. And then it goes into psychological aspect, for example, stress. How do companies or organization control on stress of the people in the companies? And also physical, like heat, temperatures, noise, and any other things that is physical in nature. Okay. Um, and then the other one is uh, newly introduced in 2015 is 6.1 and 6.4. That's basically risk management issues. Okay, so for an organization, you need to look at uh, issues on risk and how we, would you uh, address the risk. Okay, you need to review it every now and then. So this, these are basically the ISO 9000s ever since from 1996 that I've got involved with until now. 2015 versions. Okay, uh, I will just go very, a, a bit briefly on what is inside ISO uh, 2015. So basically, my talk will have two parts. One is on the basic understanding of ISO 9000, and the next will be my experience on developing it. Uh, if you look at, we have uh, 10 clauses, the section one is the scope whereby uh, it says it applies to any organization that I mentioned just now, even Kedai Mama also can uh, have um, certification on ISO 9000. Serious, eh? This is not joke, and eh? Serious, eh? <clears throat> because any organizations, any organization can have that. In fact, there's one company in uh, Bukit Indah called me. Um, they are dealing with uh, safety apparels or safety gadget for those things. Uh, but they only have five um, um, staffs. So they would want to have certification. Why? Because with ISO 9000 certification, they have names to uh, market the products. So I said, let's talk. So we, I went there and then we talked. Okay, I advised, it's not about money, but it's about whether uh, you should have or should, you should not have. So the thing is, I said five 
It's not worth to go. Why? It's not just about money or it's not just about cost, but it's also about maintaining it. There's a lot of work actually. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then section two is about normative reference. So section one, two, and three is nothing much. It only says that you have to refer to ISO 9002015, which is uh, um, fundamentals and vocabulary. Okay, it tells you to explain what is certain certain terms in the standards. Okay, and uh, it started off with section four, which is contact of the organisation, whereby you have to determine and address issues on risk whether it's internally or externally. Okay, and then uh, we have a section five on leadership. So what is important in leadership is about commitment. Okay, commitment. The um, ISO 9000 uh, emphasis on the commitment of the top management. I always mention to companies, if your top management is not committed, forget about the system. Okay? So leadership is important because they need commitments. And we have faced um, a lot of um, the same issues when we develop the system. And then about uh, section six about planning. So uh, basically, um, uh, section six uh, address um, also risk and other planning okay, plus objective uh, and whatnot. Section seven uh, about support. Uh, previously, previously in two zero zero eight, it says about resources. It names as resources, but now it is about support, which covers uh, people. Or resources. Resources cover people, infrastructure, as well as environment. Okay, so those are the things that are being used to support your operations. Like us in in uh, education, for example, like our labs, machines. These are the infrastructures, the uh, uh, academic staff. The administrative staff or support staff, those are under section seven. And section eight is about operations. This is purely operations. From the very beginning until your product finished, it tells you what to control. Okay? And section nine, definitely in any system, in any system, there are feedbacks. So you need to evaluate whatever. Uh, you are doing in the system such that you can make improvement in section 10. So that's basically um, ISO 9001. Uh, what do they have about the, the standards? Uh, probably most of you, when we talk like this, we could not imagine. Many people basically they look at just the standards. But uh, basically, I'll show you later uh, how this has been translated into our uh, what we are doing now. So just to give you some ideas, like uh, ISO 10,000 also uh, emphasis on process approach. Uh, this is basically a schematic representation of a single process where you have the input, you have the output, and then you have the feedback system. So basically, that standard stands like that. Okay, it has inputs. You have the process, you have the output, and the feedback system. If you remember just now, section nine is about evaluation, that's the feedback system. Okay? And it also emphasizes uh, this is basically the system uh, from the standard. If you translate it, basically, this is a schematic draw of the system where it in introduces also uh, uh, PDCA, there is plan, do, check, and action. So we have 10 crosses here. One, two, and three is not so much important. It's just an information. But four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, those basic elements that I mentioned to you earlier on, which you need to control. It describes, the standard describes all those things. This is the basic element that I mentioned to you. If, as if that, if you were able to control these basic elements, you should be able to produce quality products or services. So that's simple enough. Okay. All right. I put it in different perspective. That's basically a model where you have customer, whatever you get from the customers, okay, whatever you get from the customers, the requirements, then you do planning and controls before it goes into the main operations. So you look at that, that is section eight. So section eight tell you what you need to control. Okay, so it describes and define what to be controlled and how to control. So it defines in the standards. So those are the things from the customers until you finish the product. That is from 8.1 until 8.7. Okay, it touches on from getting information from the customers or determine the customer requirement as well as statutory and regulatory requirements. You go into the system or the manufacturing bits, okay, that uh, it goes into design and development, where design and development, you have uh, design planning, design development planning, you have design and development input, you have design and development uh, control, you have design development output, then you have changes, as well as you need to document whatever you have changed. Okay? And then it goes into uh, 8.4 is about subcontractors, because whatever you do, you need to have, you need to purchase or procure, whether it's materials or services. So that falls under 8.4. And then uh, 8.5 is basically how you control your operations. Like us here, we have all those um, documents. Okay, for example, like with the other uh, Peraturan Academics. Like in the industry, they have the procedures. Uh, sometimes it is sometimes it is in, in booklets and sometimes they paste it on uh, the workers' areas, working areas, such that they know what to do and what are the quality looks like, okay? And then it goes into, uh, finally, if you go into 8.5.4, preservations, even though you have finished, even though the product is finished, you still need to make sure it is preserved. For example, give you an example, like Antara Steel, for example, because they have the warehouse is full, so they put all the steels that have been produced outside. So what happened when it rains and rains and shine? So you're going to find that it will oxidize. So the quality may um, uh, degrade. So ISO 9000, in fact, define and describe this. You need to control even though uh, it is still within your uh, vicinity before it goes into the, uh, it goes to the customers, okay? Uh, and then it tells you about controlling of non conforming products. Definitely in any organization, in any system, it will not be 100%, there will be some defects. So it tells you how to control non conforming products. So in order to do all these things in operations, you need to have leadership, okay? Basically the commitment, and then you need to have planning, also resources as mentioned just now. Then after that, you have to evaluate the performance of the system such that you can do um, uh, improvement, okay? So that's basically in general. 
Um, okay. Um, that's the first, first part of the, the talk. So the second part of the talk, how many minutes do I have? Fifty minutes. A lot. Huh? Okay, I'll I'll try to cut it short. Huh? Okay. Okay. Basically, this this is this is the process. Whoever wants to um, uh, develop the system, so you start off basically top management commitments very crucial. So as I said, if you don't have top level management commitment, forget about implementing your the system. Okay? And then, uh, first of all, say for example, the time frame is one year. Uh, you need to have a two day course. Okay? Explaining um, what is ISO 1000 so that all your staff knows about the systems. So that uh, when it's implemented, all of them knows what to do. So this course is important for awareness. Uh, once it is finished, then it is all about documentation. So you need to document uh, your systems or your processes. So it is your decision which process to document. Not necessarily all, okay? Not necessarily all. And then we have uh, to develop internal audits, okay? We need to uh, develop an internal audit team, which is internal checking of the system. So basically, you need to have uh, internal audit teams, and normally we give two day um, costs to train the internal audits, uh, to train the internal auditors. <coughs> um, and then uh, that will take probably documentation will take about six months. Yeah, that depends on how fast you can do that and how big is your organization. So, in average, it's about six months. Um, after that, we have uh, you need to do auditing, and while doing auditing, you need to engage with third party auditors such that once your system is matured about, about seven or eight months, then the third party auditing will come. The third party auditor will come. You can always have, you can always appoint. It is your prerogative to appoint what company. So we have here like Siri, QV Rehlan, <coughs> you have uh, Lloyd, you have Moody, uh, Singapore based SGS, and also um, others. Eh? But these are normally a third party auditors which certify your system. Uh, they will do desktop and compliance audit. They read your systems. They look at the system whether it is about right to certify. So once they are okay, then they will come to do compliance audit. That's why the maturity period is very important. So I'm telling you this. <clears throat> you want to get certified, it's quite easy. Okay? It is easy to get certified first year. But if you don't, you're not serious about it, the second will be the second will be difficult. The second year, because they'll come every year to audit you. Okay? They come every year to audit you to maintain the certification. <coughs> so kalau first year to drama boleh lah. Okay, but second year, then everything will fall up. So, basically, <clears throat> uh, you can get certified. Okay, uh, many people, many people, or many organizations, when they get certified, certify all the banners, they put out all the banners, congratulations, uh, blah, 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 being certified, I assume it doesn't want. But, Mind you, I'm telling you this, there's a lot of company may re the certification being revoked, but nobody put up the banners. Uh, condolence, okay? Uh, certification has been revoked. Nobody do that, okay? So, but there are, there are a lot, I'm telling you. Uh, 
Once they do the audit things, then uh, you need to, to do all the corrections. It's like this is, you know, after Viva, you need to do all the corrections. Once you address all the corrections, then you're going to get certified. So if you ask me how long you're going to get certified, it is between eight to one year. So if you are fast enough, it is eight months. Sorry, not eight years. Eight to eight months to one year. So you are good enough, or you are very intelligent. Your staff is very committed. You may get through eight months to probably one year. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So I need to. Because the picture is very big. So this is an example. For example, this one company that we did in in um, Masai. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this company is producing uh, panels for um, oil rig. Okay. So they are doing like they're doing uh, uh, I put it projects and repair works. So basically, the control panel is about, about 40 footer containers. Okay, that is the control panel. It's not like what we have here at the back there. That's not, that's very small. So that company is producing control panels that is as big as 40 footer containers. Okay. <clears throat> So this is for oil rig. So these are the processes. If you look at, if you look at um, uh, the system here, um, I put all those standards that are related to the process. So basically, once again, the center part is basically the process, okay? The operations is under section eight. And in order to do that, you need to have supports under Section 7. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you, need, you need to have planning in Section 6. Then Section 9, they do all those. Uh, you look at on the right side, that's the Section 9. So they do evaluations on trainings. Okay. Uh, supplier evaluations, whether their supplies are very good or not. Supply on times correct products and whatnot, okay? They are all looking at the internal audits. Those are the data that collected. And then process and product performance. So based on, you, you look at the fact that is factory acceptance test, whether they, uh, uh, they pass the test or not, if they fail, so what are those things? So those are the performance of the product and whatever known conformity. Um, I need to go a bit fast. Eh? I intended to explain this, but I don't think we have time. Do you have time? 30 minutes. Huh? 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. I would like to go into now. This is ours, All right? Okay. Uh, from that standards, if you look at the standards, you may not imagine how it is being translated from the standard into as a system in in our case. So just now I'm talking about uh, manufacturing, but now I'm trying to translate, what I'm trying to do is to translate that standards, the definitions, as well as the descriptions of the standards into uh, what we are doing. In our case, this is teaching and learning. Okay, if you look at the square, like this, this is basically from I'm trying to put it in the perspective of MQA as well as ISO 9000. Probably, uh, uh, probably uh, EAC requirements. Okay, 
he was done purposely. <laughs> no, I don't expect it's very small like this. Here it's quite big. Uh, because uh, the pictures, the pictures, uh, I need to put a lot of things in information in one, one slide. Um, unfortunately, it's very small. Boleh ke save isn't it? Ada ni tak? Ada ni tak? Pointer. Ada. Kalau cantik warna hijau yang kasar. Yang hijau ada kasar. Anak semuanya. Habis sangat. Ya, boleh kena kat sini tak nampak. Okey, ah. Uh, boleh ke saya di sana? Nampak? Dalam tu nampak? So here I would like to show to you how I should and thousands is being applied to teaching and learning. Okay? So this might be useful to uh, to us. Uh, for our accreditation. So you look at from those things, stakeholders, okay? Stakeholders. So those people are our customers. Okay? Stakeholders can be our kementerian, can be the industry, um, can be the parents, whatsoever. So whatever we have there, so whatever we uh, we get the requirement of stakeholder, we convert it to the PEO. This is our EAC requirements, right? The program educational objective as well as program learning outcome and course learning outcome. Okay? So that should be in line with our vision and missions of the faculty or university. So from there, we design the curriculum. So this is where, if you look at, uh, if you look at under uh, eight, plus eight, so about operations, you need to, at the stakeholders, you need to determine the requirements of the stakeholders. So ISO 9000 mentioned about determining the requirements. Once you get all those requirements, you design the curriculum. Now it goes into 8.3, sections 8.3, whereby you design the curriculum. In curriculum designing, you have seven steps, sorry, six steps or five steps. That is, you need to do design and development planning. So you need to control when to finish, who, what's the input, all those things. So in designing the curriculum, that is under 8.3, eh, sorry, 8 point, yes, 8.3. That is um, design development uh, planning. Then you need to um, have design and development input. Okay. You have design and development control. Okay. Or control design development. Then you have design and development output. Where in the control, you need to verify, okay, like us, we have what? We have JKA, we have KKA, okay, curriculum, Jatan Kuasa, curriculum university, we have Senate, those are controlling. And then we have the output, okay? Once we have the output, then you have um, changes. So whatever changes from what we have designed, so it has to be documented. So if you look at ours there, before it goes into uh, academic committee, okay? We design the curriculum, it goes to academic committee. I am assuming that everything's okay. So it goes into now the delivery. That is the main operations, okay? Of the standards under eight. So, 
So you need to control. So you have lectures, you have labs, industrial training and whatnot. And then you have assessments. Okay? So if it is, if the student is in final year, then they will graduate. So we have all those employee survey, we have the SKPG, all those things come in. And during the operations, we have the industrial training reports. We have all those input, the feedbacks. That is under section nine. Okay. And we have support, all those supports uh, under section seven. Okay. Um, so once you have all those things, then uh, all the information, then we need to bring it up to department meeting for improvement. So it goes up until the Senate. So based on all those meetings, so we are going to come up with uh, improvements. So those are under section 10. So I will not elaborate very details. Okay, probably I will put the questions once uh, I'm finished. Okay, similarly, if you look at the square, uh, those under the rectangular um, bits are basically the MQA requirements, which is in terms, I put it in terms of flow charts. So if you look at MQA, it's actually come hand in hand with ISO 9000. Or you can also use ISO 9000 to control MQA requirements because in the standard it mentions about statutory and regulatory requirements. So statutory and regulatory requirements, MQA requirements, EAC requirements and others from Kementerian is part of the requirements stated and mentioned by ISO 9000. Okay, so probably uh, I will not elaborate this, I expect questions then. Okay. Okay, uh, this is probably uh, the last bit. Not the last bit, with another three slides. Uh, okay. So the for the past uh, how many years? So these are the things that um, I jotted down as uh, the challenges in developing and implementing ISO 9001. So first and foremost, that I noticed uh, many companies and organizations. Um, the objective for certification is not about quality. This is very sad. Okay? This is very sad since the implementation, implementation is only for marketing purposes. And um, it's not for incul inculcating uh, quality culture. In fact, some of the companies ask can we pay to get certified? We are willing to pay to get certified. So those are the things outside that you can find. You can find uh, those are um, certification is only uh, for marketing purposes, but not for quality. Um, the second one is commitment of the top management. I said here yeah, very often, many don't bother to know what happened to their systems. So in fact, uh, our experience, um, top management uh, don't actually bother. So they would like only to have certifi certified, but they are not involved. Uh, we had one company, um, when we developed the systems, uh, 
he was there, but he never asked. He never asked. And uh, during audited from auditors from uh, auditing conducted by Sirim on that day, um, top level management is supposed to be there because under that section, okay, uh, leadership. But he actually uh, make an appointment with customers. I was not there. So uh, the company got a major N NCR okay, for that, just because of the commitment. That shows the top level management is not committed. Um, the second one is uh, when you appoint, when they do certifications, so some of them and many of them will appoint consultants and consultants offer them to write uh, the system so they don't actually know what happened okay they don't know actually the system uh, there was an occasion i went to one of the city councils okay to do auditing and to give uh cost as soon as thousand cost so i asked about standards so unfortunately they gave they gave me the documents not the standard so they said, this is the standard. I said, no, this is not standard. I would like to see the standards. So it shows that they don't know. They just leave it to the consultant to do all those documentations. So they don't actually know. Okay, that's bad. Okay. Uh, and it's happened outside. Then he's okay. Then he's okay. Okay, then he's okay. I got confirmation from the staff here. So then he's it's not doing that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then awareness of the staff. Normally, uh, we advise. We advise that it's not just the team that is being selected that is introduced to ISO 9000, but we would like to have also almost all the staff because when they do audits and the implementations, the staff also get involved. So, but in many cases. Uh, most of the ISO 10,000 awareness are of the team that is being selected. Okay, um, probably it is a bit costly uh, to get um, everybody in into the board or to understand ISO 10,000. But you have to do that if you want to have a very effective system. Then uh, you need to have everybody on board. Okay. And uh, uh, the big chunk of the system is about documentation. Um, we have to accept the fact that here in Malaysia, especially or in Asian countries, documentation is not our culture. We have done a lot of things, but we don't document it. So once we went into the systems, then we have problem with documentation. And it take it is it is time consuming. As I said just now, it takes about six months or probably eight months, depends how good you are and depends on the format that you use. And then uh, writing of documents either too rigid, such that no rules of flexibility, or too loose that the organization lost control of the system. So sometimes you want it to be when doing documentation, you make it very tight, such that there's no leeway for flexibility. Give you a very good example. So I signed an appointment letter of certain chairs to be part of my group, for example. So I wrote a letter to this, I approve everything. But because of the rigidness of the systems that one of the uh, PTJs here in EPM said, they do not accept that just because our system is you need to do interview. So you need to look at this chat, uh, what, uh, soft skills, all those things. But to me, once I sign as a, as a, uh, a principal investigator or researcher, that's good enough. 
So that's how things are being written. So it is very rigid, such that you don't accept flexibility. So once you, if you are going to write uh, documents for ISO 9000, you need to look at flexibility. Okay. In fact, um, if you look at format of writing documents, so some would like to write very lengthy documents. So I would advise a hybrid um, type of documents whereby you have flowcharts and a bit of explanations. So that is much more uh, understandable and easily understood. Uh, different places in the same organization may have different culture, facilities, etc. So writing of the documents may have to take uh, consideration uh, those differences in, into consideration. Give you very good examples when we do uh, Tabung Haji, uh, we do consulting work on ISO, we develop the system for Tabung Haji from deposits until Hajj and then come back. Uh, because Tabung Haji has got a lot of branches. So you see, the differences is if it is in the town, even in KL, if you go to Jalan Tuan Raza, it's a big building. Yang bangunan ramping tu, okay. People will just come by the roadside, stop. Somebody stays in the car, run, run into the office, deposit or take out your money from Tabung Haji or whatever it is. Probably need few minutes, and then out you go. But in other um, areas, in kampung areas, for example, if you do that. They, they say that you are arrogant. Okay? So it's different culture altogether. So you need to say, for example, like, uh, say hello, apa kabar, cerita, you, you talk to them first, then while they're doing all the job, all those things. So that's the different culture. So when you write, writing of your, writing of the system, so you need to take into consideration of that. So say, for example, like UTM, if UTM wanted to embark into SPK, for example, so we have different faculties and different faculties have different way of doing things. So those are the things that you need to take into consideration. And then control of documents is always an issue. Uh, I think uh, this, is, this is very, very important. If you want to have an SPK, uh, control of document is very much, have to, you have to look it, into it. Okay, why? Because basically we don't know which one is new and which one is old, which one is actually uh, obsolete. So, very good example, our CI, for example, very good example, our CI. So we don't know which is the latest. Okay, so these are control documents. And then a document form or soft copy, how do we... Uh, control it, can one single person control it, or what about verifications? Okay, so these things are actually in the in, in the industry because some of them are uh, basically uh, the system is uh, on soft copy. Okay, this is going to be the last slide. And I said last slides and everybody seems to be awakened. Okay. So kalau kalau graf tu kalau, kalau graf tu kalau kita tengok mula-mula at 2:30 just now 2:40 just now it is at the top the concentration. So through time it fall down like this. So when it comes here, this is light slide then it goes up again. Okay. Okay. Uh, the five the the, the fifth uh, issues is interpretations of process. I mentioned to you just now uh, different organizations or different uh, companies will have. Uh, different businesses and will have different interpretations uh, of its <coughs> other standards. Okay, especially when you are in service uh, and also in uh, in manufacturing. So for manufacturing, it's quite quite straightforward. But once it goes into service, the um, interpretation is. A bit much more different. Okay, so this is the challenge for a consultant then. And uh, management review, uh, most uh, management review are treated as special 
ISO 9001 management review meeting. So there is a special management review meeting. Even though you have many meetings, you have what? You have um, a monthly meeting, for example, in the, in the industry. You have, for example, like uh, management meeting. Okay, that is not necessary. Basically, it's not necessary to have one management review meeting. It can be incorporated in the existing meeting, but you can add the agenda. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, internal audits, uh, normally internal auditors are not well trained. So to me, it is important to train internal audit because this is an internal checking system. It's good to have a good internal auditors. Okay. Uh, in many cases, writing of the NCR non conformance uh, report is vague and not explicit, such that it cannot be understood by the person who is to take corrective actions. Okay, so uh, these are the things that uh, internal auditors uh, have to be trained. Okay, and finally, finally, and finally, data collected. A lot of data in the system, but normally it's not being used to uh, use fully to uh, use as the basis for improvement, even though the standard says that you need to do improvement based on the evaluations of it. The data come from the evaluations. Okay. Thank you very much. I can see smiling on the face. Thank you very much and I'm happy to receive questions from the floor. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Professor Dr. Hasbula Haji Idris, a uh, very interesting uh, topic yeah, that is uh, related with the quality management system. Uh, uh, during the presentation, I just uh, memorized, you know, uh, my my uh, uh, my research related with the medical device that is really closely with the ISO 9001, especially. In medical device, we have ISOs 13485. Yeah, that is related. If there is a company uh, uh, manufactured in medical device, they need to comply uh, ISO 13485. Yeah, that is similar with the 9001. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we now we will we, we will like to invite the commentator of this event. Professor Dr. Yahya Matsam to share his view. Uh, Professor, the time and floors is yours. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me as a commentator for this talk. I think very, I can say that, uh, inspired talk, okay, especially on the uh, ISO 9000, okay. So I'm not expert in ISO 9000, all right. Uh, as you today, I'm a layman, okay. We just studied what is ISO, all right, and how we can respect ISO at the end of this presentation, all right. So it, uh, I think, for close to 30 years experience, Prof. Bula, all right? In, uh, I said that various uh, application, various, uh, I said, uh, uh, experiences, all right? In implementing, implementing the ISO, in, you can see that from the in, 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 in industry, in uh, academic, uh, Education, education sector, all right? You, you can see that uh, more or less, I think the, the key word is PDCA, okay? We have to plan, do the execution, all right? Then check, okay, to ensure that what has been planned is achieved, all right? 
followed by the CQI. Okay, that's right. The last part of the about the data collection. Right? No point if you have a thousand of data, okay, then we do nothing with the data. We have to do the analysis. And then we come up with the correct action for what area that we are going to improve. All right. So the more or less, okay, talk by Hoshbula, okay, started with the, uh, uh, I can say that, begin with the introduction of ISO 9001, all right? How important of the ISO 9001, all right? And what ISO, what ISO 9001 can help us in our working life, all right? That's very important, all right? Uh, you can, in the, the, in the presentation, all right? The uh, has highlighted okay uh, why that the, the 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 ideas of ISO the one is implemented okay on what reason so and then so on all right then it's followed by the evolution okay you can see that evolution of ISO nine thousand started with ISO nine ISO nine thousand two nineteen ninety four okay until ISO nine thousand one two zero fifteen. All right, that, I think that the, the recent one, most of the company kept okay, practicing this ISO 9001 2015. All right, then uh, Prof. Bla has uh, discussed in detail okay, the journey of the ISO 9001. Okay, why? Okay, the, this evolution started with uh, 1994 and uh, now up to 2015. All right. Uh, in ISO 901 2015, okay, there are 10 sections. Right? There are sections, all right? Then he has discussed in details, in details all of the sections, all right? The importance of all parties get involved, okay, in the processes, in the, in the, in the processes, all right? Start with the, I can say that, uh, very low rank staff up to the very high rank staff in the organization have to get involved in the, all the activities, in the, all the processes, all right? And the part two of the presentation about the QM, uh, deployment and certification time, all right? Then, uh, he has highlighted, okay, how to obtain the certification, the processes is, uh, is take about uh, eight to one year, a okay, very tedious job, all right? We have to prepare a lot of the humans, all right? We have to prepare, uh, I can say that, to ensure that, all right, all the uh, work processes, okay, are aligned what you are practice in your working, in your daily life or in your daily work. That's very important, all right? Uh, he also highlighted the case study, how the, he implemented the ISO 9001, okay, in uh, industry on or in company, okay, uh, up to the uh, level whereby the the, the the company gets certification for the all the processes, right? But the most important, uh, I think, that uh, inspired us how he implementing uh, the ISO 9001 in uh, teaching and learning or the academic quality management. All right. I still remember when he, uh, like he said that uh, Etana, okay, as a deputy director in by that time unit called TTM, okay, he implemented okay his knowledge about ISO in the all, like uh, he said that uh, processes. All right. That result that we managed to secure, or did we managed to obtain our self accreditation status. All right. In the self-aggregation self status, all right, they still have to show that uh, all the processes that uh, I can say that related to the teaching and learning are uh, in place, okay, systematically uh, arranged, designed, all right, then the documentation should be enough, uh, enough documentation to support all the processes. And the day, you can see that, okay, uh, the, 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 the MQA, the body who's uh, do the, the, the uh, audit for the, uh, for the SWAT agitasi, self-reputation audit, all right? Uh, agree that, all right, you can all have has all the processes, right? They should 
um, manage to show all the processes are in place, all right, then support by the all the field traditional decum. Okay, the, then in, two zero, in year 2013, 2012, uh, 2013, all right, we, uh, UTM has been awarded, okay, the self accreditation status based on the processes, okay, that have been observed, that have been evaluated by the MQA. Okay, then all the processes, okay, uh, is based on the ISO 9, 9001 approach. All right. Then, uh, if you uh, observe further, all right, how the ISO 9001 be implemented, all right, as we are, we are as academicians, we are very familiar with the outcome-based education, okay, OBE, all right. In OBE, we start with the uh, needs of the stakeholders, the industry, what type of graduates that we are looking uh, in uh, five, ten years, okay, fine, all right. Then what we have here, a wide attainment of the student we are looking, right? That similar to the ISO, that we call the quality objective, right? Then we set with the PLO. How to achieve that? Uh, that in, in OBE, we translate or we formulate the PLO, all right? Uh, that become the quality objective, okay? Then after that, we design the curriculum, okay? To ensure that we can uh, meet or we can fulfill them, or we can, we can uh, I can say that, uh, 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 fulfill or we can, uh, what we have targeted in the PLO and be achieved. All right. Then after that, we have to do the assessment. Okay, in ISO, there are three formula that how we can improve. Number one, audit. Second, audit. Third, audit. Okay, audit, audit, and audit. Okay. That's how we can improve. Okay, we don't know again, we didn't know that. Okay, we are lack here and there and here. All right, we don't know that this we don't have enough documentation to support all the processes. We don't know that our gap. Okay, uh, and we're to do the gap analysis. Right, then we know when we, when we, we, we did the, the, the audit. Okay, when we know. All right. Then we have complied this, complied this, but we didn't comply because because of the reason, so and so forth. Okay. Then uh, last but not least about the result. Okay, the result is mentioned here, but they say one in OBE we have the result. Okay, then we have to discuss with the result. Okay, look back. I say the result is uh, I can say that aligned to what we are targeting in our uh, PLO and also fulfill the requirement of the. Uh, uh, stakeholders. Okay, more or less, the that uh, we can conclude about that uh, we call that customer satisfaction. All right, customer satisfaction. Okay, all parties, all right, must be checked to ensure they're satisfied or not with our services, with our teaching. Uh, I say that uh, method, with our delivery, so on and so forth. Okay, then that's the concept we make this. I can conclude the concept of OBE and ISO more or less uh, similar. Right. And okay, the last part of the of the presentation of this talk, okay, by Prof. Wula about the challenges okay, in the ISO. All right. Then when, when our let's say in UTM, you know we don't have we, we are, I think uh there are 20 uh, public university, we are the one who don't have any ISO. Okay, for the uh, we call that corporate ISO. Almost all university nowadays have the the, the we call the corporate ISO, right? Some of them, not only the ISO, the the, the we call the commercial ISO. Uh, some university also have we call that Sharia compliance ISO. Let's say UPNM, right? Some university they also have compliance. Okay, higher than. Uh, for the ordinary ISO. All right. However, okay, uh, in 2018, okay, we have redesigned okay, our we call the internal quality system, we call the SPK, System Function Quality. Okay. SPK has been developed based on the ISO 9001-2015, uh, mixed with COPA, Code of Practice Program Accreditation. Okay. Meaning that, okay, 
if we are really practicing, okay, now we are in the process of uh, we just uh, I think in UTM we have, we have completed the the uh, we call that uh, audit kecukupan, all right. Then we now this year this uh, and next year we go to each of the jabatan and faculty, okay, to check okay how the faculties follows what has been written, what has been documented in the uh, SPK manual. All right, this I think uh, as I mentioned earlier. All right, although we don't have any ISO, but the SPK UTM is based on the ISO 9001 the difference is we don't have any certi certification. We have our own certification, all right? Because we want the ISO, the, 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 the quality becomes a culture, not a, not a quality, okay? Because someone we come to audit us, then we are uh, make ourselves, because we make ourselves, okay? In, 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 we call that, uh, quote unquote, per quality, okay? Otherwise, okay, we, 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 do what I want, what, what I want to do. Right? Well, but the, 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 the idea is, is culture, as I mentioned earlier. All right. And uh, in his uh, okay, the last part of lecture, all right, Prof. Bula has highlight, highlighted eight challenges. Uh, eight challenges, all right. So, uh, as I mentioned, number one about the objective about certification, all right. Is it because you want to the logo? ISO certified, certified. I, I mean, sometimes we can see that the ISO, there's a logo there on the, uh, uh, say that, uh, uh, letterhead, okay, ISO certified company, is it enough? All right. We have some faculty before this, okay, have their ISO, after that they let go, all right. However, the most important thing is, all right, behind the ISO, the work processes, okay, they are still practicing the whole, the, 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 the work processes, all right? How to prepare the exam question, how to, uh, I can say that, uh, collect the cost files and so forth, okay? That is one of the processes. Not just the the, the, the logo of, uh, I can say that every day, this company has been certified with the ISO certification, all right? That about the objective, all right? Then second about commitment of the top management. Okay, you know that everyone are busy with their own business, all right? But the ISO, as I mentioned, that Prof. Uh, mentioned, okay? In one case, where, where the ISO, the company, okay, uh, NCO, they're non compliant, okay? Because the top management looks like that, uh, I can say that, uh, assume that the ISO is not, they are uh, not important, and might be not, not, not important, okay? They let the, the let the, the team usually they, in the organization they have a team whereby to implement the ISO. Let the team to to ensure that the company get the ISO certification okay, without involvement of the of the of the I said, top management. ISO is important. The top management okay will be there actually during the audit. All right, so I'm second right, the class ruler, right, all right, and also the documentation. All right. Uh, uh, maybe I the awareness of the staff was awareness. All right. All staff must wear that. But you thought the way okay, the, our we are going for the ISO certification. You can imagine for oh, this the extra workload for us. All right. We have to prepare this. We have to prepare this. We have to face next year. We will be audited by this this uh light by this series. Okay. Let the Staff have a clear, I can say that uh, picture, all right? Clear why we want to implement the ISO. Okay. The purpose of ISO is we are going to process, we want we, as we, we want a clear job processes, okay? Whereby if the staff A is not available, staff B can do the same job, the same job, carry out the task, okay, without staff A. Okay, that is it. That, Meaning that anyone can do the job, okay, as long as okay, the job processes are clear. Okay, that's very important. And documentation. Okay, some company that we mentioned by Prof. Dula, they engage the consultant, the consultant firm to prepare a to Z. Okay, then 
when you show to the uh, in the audit, okay, this is where there is some experience, okay, you show the document to the staff, you will see this document, none of the, some of the staff, they didn't wear that. They have the ISO document. Can you imagine that? Okay, the ISO, the company is looking for the ISO, all right, then maybe 50%, 40% of staff didn't wear that. This is the document I saw there. They're going to practice, they have to follow okay, in their workplace, so on and so forth. All right. Then, uh, interpretation, of course, all right. But I think they, uh, nowadays, okay, uh, less burden, the lower, the less case where there's different interpretation, all right. Then, uh, Internal audit, okay, very important. Okay, in ISO, they want they, because they want culture, uh, uh, quality become a culture, not quality as I mentioned earlier. When the Siri, okay, we know that next week the Siri will come to visit us, then we have to check everything. Okay, if there is a letter evidence that the, 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 the meeting that or, or the, the decision had been made three months ago. Then now we start to prepare the, the letter, okay? They prepare the print of meeting, okay? Because the auditors will come to audit us. That's not the, 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 the culture, the culture that they are looking in the organization. All right. That's why the internal audit is actually like that if you, uh, we are familiar with the formative and summative, okay? So we can assume that, okay? The internal audit is a formative exercise, yeah, meaning that the purpose is to improve maybe some of the processes okay, we are uh, uh, okay, so that didn't follow due to the some reason. Okay, that the chance for us to improve. Okay, but when the hearing, when the lot come to visit us, that become a summary. Okay, there will be judgment either we are complying or not to comply to the standard. But uh, last but not least, about the data collected, as I mentioned earlier, all right? We have a thousand of data, okay? Then what to do with that data? Okay? The most would now be the data analytic, uh, I can say the era, all right? All data, okay, should be uh, become okay, very valuable data, all right? We can make use of data, okay, for our future planning, for our CQI, so on and so forth. All right, so uh, I can conclude here, all right. As a layman, okay, now I have some good understanding, not, maybe not up to the 100%, but 67% understanding about why the ISO 9000 is very important, okay, in the organization, all right. Then where there is challenges when you want to implement the ISO, all right. But I can uh, the final say that Quality, I can say that quality is a journey and not a destination. Meaning that we are looking tomorrow be better than today, after tomorrow, much, much better than, after tomorrow, much, much better than tomorrow. That we call the quality. But if we are maintaining, we are only that level of quality, we are, we are actually, we, we didn't practice quality in, uh, I can say that, uh, True meaning of the quality. Okay, so for, uh, again, thank you very much. Okay, and congratulations to Asbula for his good, uh, despite his uh, extended presentation today. Hopefully, that we can get benefit from this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Data uh, Yahya, for your uh, reflection. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to invite uh, Professor Dr. Hasbullah uh, for next session is question and answer. Uh, and, uh, and now I would like to open, open the floor uh, in the question and session answer. If you have any question, you just uh, raise your hand. Okay, that is easy. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very interesting uh, lecture, Prof. Uh, I think uh, 
because since, for example, lab entries, uh, we're talking about lab entry industry coming to the lab, they always uh, ask that your lab is integrated or not. So maybe uh, Pro can share, based on your experience, what is the hassle for lab entry to be integrated. Maybe the first step that you need to plan ahead. Any lab, for example, lab entry, for example, materials lab, maybe we have a uh, Marine lab and so on so forth. Actually, if industries come uh, to us and ask whether our lab is accredited is not or not, uh, he is actually referring to ISO 17025. It's not ISO 9001. But ISO 17025 can also fall under um, uh, ISO 9001, because in ISO 9001, it mentioned about statutory and regulatory requirements. So as I said just now, uh, the MQA requirement can also, either you can embed it, or it can be part of the system through a cost <coughs> mentioned about statutory and regulatory requirements. So anything other than the standards can fall into uh, any of the clauses. Okay. Uh, if you mentioned about accreditations of ISO uh, 17025, um, it is quite similar to ISO 9001, but the only thing is it's quite specific to labs, where um, the requirement is uh, almost similar, but there are some changes. Similar like ISO 13485, because it's very specific to certain areas. Uh, but <clears throat> I presume it's going to be uh, almost the same. The hassles or quote unquote hassles. Okay. The work, uh, you, need to go, you need to get everybody on board. If you were to use the same timeline that I'm using, it is actually the same work. You need to get people um, of that lab's awareness, okay? And then there's a lot of documentations that you have to have somebody, uh, like in 2008, they call it management representative. So ISO 17025, uh, as I, I uh, know, as I knew it, you need to have that officers, so-called the like management representative. Um, you need to do all the documentations, um, and then you still need to have the system to be matched to certain times, and you have also the auditors. So if you look at my presentation just now, all those um, challenges as well as the timeline is almost the same because it's under ISO, ISO. So, so, so I, I hope that will answer a bit on your curiosity. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, another question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about costing practice? This depends on the size of the company or anything. This is bad. <laughs> um, you're, you're saying about uh, the cost of the thing? Yeah, okay. An average, an average um, size company, say the number like 100 workers. Um, we used to charge 40,000. Okay, but depends on how you deal with the industries. Um, put that thing aside. So I'm telling you, for the cost, uh, based on the timeline, two-day cost used to be about 2,500 a day. So now I think about 2,000 a day. So that will uh, cost you for um, um, conducting a cost for awareness. Six thousand for two days, two days, and then documentation normally 
consultant charge about 1,500 per day. Okay, just to help them to get their documentation right. So if you call, say for example, if you call somebody uh, many, many times within the six months, uh, meaning to say your company is very rich, you can pay at those fees. Uh, similarly, uh, if you go through, uh, if you go through uh, uh, internal audit costs, it's also a two days hands on uh, audit costs. So it costs you about, used to be 2,005 per day. Now I think, as I said just now, about 3,000. So totally 6,000. So plus the two costs uh, for the awareness costs. So you have, Six thousand in hand, and then um, previously uh, for two days, two main days, two main days, auditors, uh, external auditors come for average size industry. Uh, you need to have two main days, so one main day is about one thousand three, but I think now it's much more than uh, used to be one thousand three. So for two days. 2006 times by two, that is four main days. So that's about 5,200. So all in all, not all, excluding, excluding um, the documentations, that's about 11 to 12,000. So imagine if you add another C, for example, about six to 10,000. Uh, plus the certifications you need to pay once you get the certifications and uh, yearly, last time it used to be 1,000 a, 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 a year. Now, berapa eh? Per year punya subscription itu? Being, being accredited, uh, being certified? Okay, used to be 1,000 per year. Now I think it's more than that. Huh? About three thousand now. So the cost of the is about twelve thousand. Probably the, the documentation is cost you know, ten thousand uh, plus the, plus the um, uh, plus the, the certificate, certificates. So all in all, probably about uh, ten plus six plus five. I think uh, easily about twenty five thousand. Is yeah. the documentation exercise. So that's why we charge we normally charge forty thousand. But in business, people try to this is the that, right? Because the part people try to get jobs, so they are lowering the, the cost. Uh, some people, some consultants company offer you about nineteen thousand all in all, you get certified. Others offer you 10,000, but as I said just now, you do so anything. They, they write everything for you. So it comes back to what you want. You want quality or you want certified or you want certifications? You answer it. Clear? Yeah. Thank you. I think that it shows you experience with the 26 years. In the ISO, <laughs> <laughs> I just received the permission for the ICC uh, equation. It's a uh, 49,000 plus fifty k for the certification for one. Uh, thank, thank you. Well, I think, I think the last equation. Yeah, for this equation. Thank you to uh, your equation in the uh, audience. Rasbula, are you welcome to the stage? Stage. Uh, stage. <laughs> there is no stage. Okay. Uh, we we want to. Do you like to invite uh, the chairman, Associate Professor Engineer Technologies, Dr. Zani uh, Ahmad, uh, to give the to Prof. Thank you.
gentlemen we come to the end of the event on behalf of our organization committee i would like to apologize for any uh, shortcoming for the event and uh, again thank you very much for the coming and uh, everyone to involve uh, this event uh, inaugural lecture series successfully we would like to uh, request the audience uh to stand up the singing of keunggulan terbilang <laughs> Bala cita cita kami anak kandung dunia dibun bernaung usaha kami bukti cintamu di kau bersada ilmu keragaman kejuangan. Takwa dan iman terarah kecemerlangan Kenyataan penyelidikan dan tulisan perundingan Berimakan kepada wadah di sini kami berdiri Sedia pada janji Kepala berhubi bahasa UTM Sanjuri Sanjuran bangsa Okay, we end the session. Wabila topik balik jaya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.